All right, uh, next piece here. It, within those polls, we had to do a separate little pullout segment on this because this is quite significant. Democrats really not excited about Joe Biden as the next Democratic presidential nominee. Let's go ahead and put these numbers up on the screen. So uh, this was from that Washington Post poll, the one that was worse for Democrats in the overall numbers. It's also really bad for Biden. 56% of Democrats want to see a different Democratic nominee next time around. 35% say that they are with Biden. Um, now, you might have speculated because this approval rating has come up, kind of the vibes have been better in his direction. There was a whole dark Brandon memes and mm -hmm. all of this stuff. He has gotten some things done, student loan debt, cancellation, all of those things. You might have thought that the Democratic base was basically feeling like, um, all right, well, let's just stick with Joe. Not the case, clearly not the case. A, a pretty solid majority here saying they would like someone else. And you could see this reflected in the comments of some Democratic um, members of Congress and uh, Democratic leadership in their reluctance to even say whether he should run again. Let's take a listen to what Nancy Pelosi had to say when she was asked that question. And I'm wondering, do you think he should run in 2024 or do you think the party should put someone else forward? Might be better? I'm, I'm, I'm President. Biden is the president of the United States. He did a great service to our country. He defeated Donald Trump. Let's not forget that. If you care about the air we breathe, the water we drink, the education of our children, jobs for our, our um, their families, pensions for their seniors, any subject you can name. I'm, I'm not going into politics about whether the president should, uh, should run or not. Not going into politics that? over whether the president should run or not. That's Pretty yeah. remarkable. It was, it's such a, yes, next question. What? Like, what's happening? You know, I support Schumer, President Biden. Next Schumer question. also said, uh, Schumer also said, he's like, if he runs, I'll support him. Like, where is this all coming from? Biden right. himself, as we said, he gave that interview. He didn't say he would run. He blamed it on campaign finance. Yeah. But clearly some note has gone on somewhere where everybody's like, if, if. And I'm like, well, what do they know? that we don't know. Here's the thing, this isn't speculation. That's the Speaker of the House, number three in line to the presidency, the number two Democrat in the entire party. Known Chuck Joe Schumer's Biden number like three. Two years. Yeah, literally, yeah, <laughs> basically since birth, uh, the two of them have known each other. Schumer, you know, same thing, the number three Democrat in the party, the leader of the United States Senate. Like, again, these are guys who meet with him all the time and talk to him on the phone. Like, what do they know that is affecting their public? Like, at the if, if the White House is pissed off at the speculation, and the speculation. Tell your surrogates and the leaders to all just go out and be like, he's running, next question. Yeah. But they don't say that. I don't know what to make of it at this yeah, point. I don't know either. Here's, here's a couple of theories. One is we know from uh, a long history in Washington, Joe Biden is extremely indecisive. Mm -hmm. um, you see this with, uh, actually you saw it in the run up to 2016 when he was doing the will he, won't he run right. stuff. You saw it with the student loan debt stuff where he's been hemming and hawing about it for months and months and months and months and months. And finally like, you know, was, was pressured into ultimately doing it. He is very, very, he's both a micromanager and also indecisive, which is really bad, bad in terms bad of combo. just like, a bit, you know, managing because you don't empower people to make decisions, but you also like don't make any decisions. That could be what's going on here. And in fact, um, let's go ahead and put the CNN piece up where they have um, uh, a big report. And this was one of these that had like 10 different people on the byline. So they clearly tried to go like mm -hmm. really deep on this when they say Democrats are warming to the idea of Biden running for re-election. They're still not convinced he will. Age looms as a major factor. So does the first lady. Uh, then again, his exit music at Friday's rally was Daft Punk's One More Time. But um, here in this article, they kind of lay out that there was a lot of nervousness a couple months ago, like pre-Dobbs about Biden running again. And uh, when the DNC meeting was here, there were apparently meetings going on across the street mm. where like top party officials were huddling and like, oh my God, how can we like, who should we get to do, you know, run instead of Biden? They actually say over drinks while looking around to make sure no one overheard. They winced and grimaced and whispered, what could they do to stop Biden from running for re-election again? They go on to say that since then, the mood has changed, things have turned, and now they're feeling better about Biden. But they talk about the fact that obviously for Biden, you know, he always does this like over the holidays, sit down with the family, see what they think, solicit their input before he makes an official decision. So I don't know. I mean, 
I still have to think that this guy is really planning on running again. I think they have to drag his corpse across the finish line. Yeah. No matter what, because he's the only one that could probably win. I think there's a lot yeah. of wish casting among Democratic yeah. elites and the donor class. Right. They really like people. They love Buttigieg, you yes. You know, and they have, might have some like, you know, Gavin Newsom fantasies or whatever as well. It's grotesque, all of, all of it is disgusting. <laughs> but, um, Ultimately, I think they're gonna suck it up and they're gonna back Joe. Now, what I will say in terms of the Democratic base is I'm doing my monologue today about Trump and DeSantis. There's a lot of media fascination about, you know, oh, could DeSantis mm -hmm. take Trump down? Joe Biden is by the numbers, this is not my opinion, this is by the numbers, Joe Biden far more vulnerable to a primary challenge yep. than Donald Trump. Trump is basically, you know, he still has a majority of Republicans who say, yeah, we want Trump to run again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want this guy. And, you know, when you look at the, the polling, yeah, there was one poll out of Florida that had DeSantis up in that one state. But if you look overall, Trump still dominates the polling among Republicans and there's no one. DeSantis is in a second, but it's not a particularly close second. So I do think there's a lot of... Um, media bias here going on in the fact that they are not really open. They're talking about, is Biden going to run or is he not? They're not talking about the fact that he could run and face a really significant primary challenge, and it is much more likely that challenge could succeed than, frankly, against Donald Trump. They have a lot of wish casting about someone being able to take out Donald Trump, but the person who is far more vulnerable at this point is Joe Biden. Yeah, but you would need somebody like a Ted Kennedy who is such a, you know, person in his own right, brand, yeah. access to money, to do it. And mm -hmm. Kennedy had the Kennedy legacy. He had the Kennedy name. He had the Kennedy money. There's nobody really who has comes even close to that to be able to uh, go after Biden. Although so. it's a different era where uh, that sort of like established political, I mean, look at Trump. That sort of established it's political true. network just doesn't need, mean what it used to mean. And it's not as necessary. I mean, it's a media game campaigns, it's all just a media media theater, it's a media game. The on the ground organizing and all of that, I know a lot of canvassers are gonna hate me, it's not that that doesn't matter, but the the heart and soul of a campaign today is like earned media. Yeah, and that's what Ron DeSantis, that's what Trump figured out, that's what Ron DeSantis figured out, that's what Bernie Sanders, you know, really was able to, to galvanize sort of independent media um, in his camp. So um, I don't I don't discount that someone who doesn't have that like longstanding established family name political network could come out of nowhere and challenge this guy because there's clearly an appetite for an alternative. You know that all these Gavin Newsom types and whatever like they're not going to run against Joe no, Biden. Never, never. So there's going to, have be, to be an outside. There's yeah, going to be right. a gigantic opening for um, for someone to to fill. And I think it's, I just find it really noteworthy that the media loves to obsess over whether someone could take out Trump, but really doesn't talk about whether Biden might face a primary that could be a significant challenge to him if he does decide to run again. I agree. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.